Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have something new to the lab. A metrology, bottom end of the metrology grade. Decade resistance box. More than a couple decades. Uh, this particular unit is the RS-201W from IET. And it goes from 0.1 ohm all the way up to 99 mega ohms. So nine, uh, just shy of 100 mega ohms in this resistance box. I've got a couple of meters in the lab where I'm going to have to do a alignment and calibration on a wide range of ohm measurements. And if you don't do the alignment and it doesn't take on every range, it fails calibration and won't calibrate. It won't actually save the offsets. So we're going to get into that in a future video. But for right now, I needed a resistance box that would cover all of the ranges that I needed. And I also needed a resistance box that was precise enough to do an alignment and a calibration on. This particular unit is a, resistors are half watt, uh, 2.5 watt at, at the ninth step. The range is zero to 100 mega ohm in 0.1 ohm steps. And we have an accuracy on this particular box of 0.1 with an offset of 0.036. The offset's actually going to be really important. One of the hard things with this box is, is to get completely zero because you have every single one of these knobs as a switch and getting that switch offset or that switch res contact resistance down is kind of the art of these particular boxes. So just something we're going to have to deal with. It'll be good enough to do the uh, four and a half digit meter or things like that. And it was checked on a um, fluke eight and a half digit meter is what I, IET used to check this. I did get this one with calibration paperwork, so I know all the offsets of all the resistors that are in here. Um, there's really nothing to this box. It is literally a box with a bunch of switches and a bunch of resistors in it. That's all it is. And a couple of binding posts on the top. There is a higher power version of this. If you need to take a step up, they actually make a two watt one. This is the half watt. It'll be fine for the... Um, meters that I need to adjust. So why the need for it? Well, this is my old one. And as you can see, not much has changed. The box shrank a little bit. The resistors got a little bit smaller. The switches got a little bit better, but it's switches and a bunch of series resistors. That's really all these boxes are. This one's busted. I have all the decades in place on this one. And if I measure with all the switches set to zero end to end, there's a 35 ohm offset on this box, and there's a very intermittent contact in here. So the resistors typically aren't the source spot in these. These are extremely high quality resistors for the time. These are all 1% resistors. So this box is an order of magnitude more accurate than this box, but we want to get this box up and running if we can. So what's that all going to take? Well, if we take a look at the bottom of these switch contacts, I've got this one off. And there's our problem. So the switches have corroded significantly. Come on, stay put. The switches have corroded significantly, or tarnished, really. It's not corrosion, it is tarnished, but uh, that's going to have to go. So I'm going to have to disassemble every single one of these switches and give it a good cleaning. That should bring this box back to relatively good health. If something goes completely sideways, we have a new one in the lab that we'll be using for alignments and calibrations, but we want to get this decade box up and running. This particular decade box actually does 0.1 to 10 meg as well. So it covers the same range as the new one, but uh, a little bit older resistors on this one. So to take these switches apart, there's four tabs. If you bend the tabs out, the switch will come apart and be ready for cleaning. This particular one is the, ah, so this is the uh, 100, 100K range. But uh, yeah, that's pretty terrible. And it's um, introducing a little too much of an offset and throwing it out of alignment. So not really much to go wrong in these boxes unless somebody tortures one of the resistors and overheats it. If more power is the need, they do make 
this thing, which puts this thing to shame. And we have a 1 to 100 mega ohm power resistor decade box. This will this will dissipate a lot of heat. I believe this is a 5 watt. Uh, let's check the model number. 240C. If that's the case, I'll have to put a label on it so I can remind myself what the wattage is. So this particular resistor decade box will actually dissipate 225 watts. So it's good for 1,000 volts DC per decade. So essentially power requirements are 5 amp, 1.5 amp, 0.5 amp, 0.15 amp, 0.5 amp, and 0 0.005 amp are what can be pushed through without overloading the power resistors that are in here. So this is for small signal stuff, much bigger signal stuff. <laughs> so let's take a look at some two-wire measurement with the box set to zero. As we can see, we have a bit of an offset. So thermal gradients have caused us some problems here in the lab. I actually have the wood burning stove running, so it is fairly warm in the lab, so the meter's reading a little high. Um, the meter was warmed up, everything was good. Not really much to warm up in a decade resistance box, but the Fluke 8508, which was used to calibrate this resistance box, measured a resistance of 359 milliohm is just the zero switch contact resistance. Not too bad. We're not off by that far. We're off by 0 0.05 ohms ish from the two meters being accurate, but that could also be temperature wise. If I let this meter cool off and I hit it and just let it turn on, it reads a, almost exactly the same thing like it's supposed to. So we definitely have some thermal gradient messing with the measurement a little bit. So, but if I tweak some of the knobs, we can dial one resistance or one ohm increments. Not bad. So, all in all, the new one works great. Everything's good to go. As expected, it's brand new, so it should hit spec without too much trouble. Um, the real things that go wrong in these is switch contact resistance, and then if you accidentally overload one of the resistors, put a little too much power into the front end, dissipate too much power, burn up one of the resistors. You can burn up the switch contact, burn up the resistors, and it that can damage one of these boxes. Other than that, Really not much to go wrong in these very simple devices. Kind of hard to engineer, but all in all, relatively simple units. So we've got a good start. We're going to have to tackle this guy, take a look at some of the uh, contact resistance. So the way this switch is put together is there's a moving portion at the bottom which just wipes and bridges the contact between the ring and the pad as it goes around. That's how it selects the resistor of, um, of choice. So I have to clean this pad, and I have to clean these contacts on every single one of these. Now, I've used deoxit and a couple of other things and the usual suspects, and it's a little too far gone for just general purpose switch cleaner. So we're going to have to get a little bit more aggressive on these things. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to get all these cleaned up, and I will bring you guys back when we have some success. Okay, the tarnish on this thing is being absolutely a nightmare to come off. Chemicals aren't doing it, and we need to get even more aggressive. So, here we go. I've got one of the nine switches clean. I have to do the rest of the uh, switch loops, but... Q-tips and the usual suspects were just not doing it. So we're going to step it up a little bit with some nylon, stiff nylon brushes, especially with these down here. These are much stiffer. These are going to clean it up really good. 
I don't want to kill the switch contacts by doing anything too aggressive to them. So I didn't want like a wire brush or anything like that. Chew up the contacts. I want to leave as much contact surface as I can. So that's why we're going with nylon. Uh, for those of interest looking for these particular brushes, um, typically found with gun cleaning supplies. Uh, the nylon and the metal get along, and they don't... Uh, these are actually a softer nylon than this. I'm really looking forward to this end going at some of these switch contacts. So, get everything unpacked, get another switch open, keep it the cleaning because I have to do this eight more times. Since the switch pack has only two solder connections to pop it out, I'm actually going to take all the switches apart and do it that way. It's going to be much easier to get to these tabs so we can uh, pull the switch apart and give it a good clean this way. Uh, getting the tool in and getting two of the tabs bent up so I had access to get the switch out was rather difficult with them in position. Come on, get under there without cutting the phenolic. And that's the hard part is you got to get under there and bend this tab up without breaking the tab or cutting the phenolic. And that is easier said than done. So have this delicate procedure I got to do many times, four on each, nine total. And uh, just to get the switches open so we can clean them up, but it'll be worth it when we're done. Uh, you can get away with just three and slide the switch pack out and then find the switch that flies, which is this part right here. This needs to get put back on the switch somewhere, but an incredibly tarnished connection. So let's get to cleaning. All right, after quite the aggressive cleaning, that looks a lot better. So we've got the switch contacts all cleaned up. And now it's time to put the switch back together and give it a test. No wonder this thing was giving me so much trouble. Look at that. That's the 10K range. There's not even a contact there. This is awful. All right. We have, may have come to the end of the line, unfortunately, with this one. Um... Got the switch cleaned up, and I was just sanity checking. It's not going to stay. That's fine. I was just sanity checking the uh, assemblies before I put them back in and wired them in, just in case I had to clean them back up again. And let's see what we found. So up on the meter, we'll hook this up to the resistor pack. Like that. All right, so there's our shorting out. Slow this down a bit. So there's our shorting out of the resistor pack. Uh, point uh get a better connection that one kind of sucks there so 0.9 not bad so this will be 10 that one's okay 20 is okay 30 just goes bad so 31 k ohms is out of range 41 Five, six, seventy-two. So there's a second resistor that's out of range. Eighty-two and one hundred and three. So I actually have three resistors that are out of range due to tolerance stacking. It's pushing this uh, this assembly out of range for its one percent tolerance. Uh, at 1% tolerance at 10K, uh, I think it was 0.6, or no, at 60, 0.1 is what I'm allowed out, not. So it's 10X what it should be. So at some point in time, some of these resistors either got 
wet, got stressed. Some of them have been blackened at the tips a little bit. So not much I can do about this unless I go and uh, replace all of the resistors on the cam switches. So given that we have another res decade resistance box in the lab for calibrations, this one may have entered the realm of beyond economical repair. Sometimes we have to cut losses and uh, make the decision not to put any more time into something. And I think as this has moved past switch contacts, especially with procuring all these resistors, the damage that could happen to the switches during the soldering process, there's a lot that could go wrong to get this back up and running. So, and it's just a decade resistor box. There's nothing unique, special, or of historic significance to keep this up and running. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Should we keep going? Should we cut our losses and move on? Should we try to get another one of these in the lab? If I could find one for a reasonable price, see what we're see what's going on. This one for sure was not stored well, given how chewed up these switch contacts were. Um, the other thing I'm weighing right now, so you guys can understand my thought process, is given how corroded and tarnished these contacts were, how well are they going to stay? So even though I got them cleaned up, how long do I have before they decide to go south again? So that's just an unknown at the moment. Maybe we'll keep the box around, do an experiment, see if the uh, um, work I've done holds up over time, improve our process here, or uh, see if these would just corrode off again in a couple of days, see what's going on. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at this Decade Resistance Box, as well as the other Decade Resistance Box that we've added to assist with calibrations and push the lab forward. Not every day in the lab is a success. Sometimes, I wouldn't call it a failure because you always learn something, but uh, sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes things do. In this case, uh, this unit was a little too far gone, and uh, today it just didn't work out. The patrons have asked me to post the videos that work out as well as the videos that don't work out. So that's one of the reasons why this video is going to go up on YouTube. And I, I also agree with them that it's important to show the successes and the quote failures. I tend to learn a little bit more when things don't work out the way I think they're supposed to than when they do. So don't mind it not working out. We'll just give it another go. If you'd like to help me bring videos to YouTube and put more of this content out there, check out the Patreon page. Patreons are running early access for what's going up on YouTube. They're running videos ahead. Everything will eventually wind up on YouTube. Um, as of the recording of this video, there's nothing behind the paywall, just early access content, and the support that I get from the Patreons is greatly appreciated. Helps keep the lights on, helps keep videos coming as well as they help steer the channel. So patron assistance cannot be understated, nor should it. And it, I am eternally grateful for everyone who has decided to join. With that, as always, I will see everybody in the comments section below, in between videos. And as always, more is on the way. And I will see everybody in the next video.